Hello, everybody. I'm Rob Smith, the New Black VTF here at T3 Live with this day's and week's market wrap up. And boy, this has been a good start to the year here as far as volatility and things moving around and not so easy for everybody. And hopefully, after I get done today, some of these things will start to make some sense to you and hopefully help you in the future. So, the first thing is, uh, you know, people are always asking themselves, you know, why is this doing that? Why is what's going on? And, you know, with this, you know, I'm always going to look at the technicals and show you how I look at it and, and the setups that have been there, uh, you know. But when you have lack of QE, no buybacks because you got uh, you've got earnings coming up, you got China, you got oil on the lows, pretty much perfect storm. The you know the question is what took so long. Anyway, uh, it is what it is, and so um, for right now, let's just start take a look step back since we're starting off this year and go exactly why are we seeing what we're doing technically and and why can it be difficult um, or why can it be easier? First of all. Started off the year, closed the year out with the lower high, and then right out the chute, we got slammed, right? That first week here, slammed. And so uh, you've heard me talk about a simultaneous break. And so the problem is when you start over a new year and a new month, you've got all sorts of new time frames beginning. Everything's starting over again. And so uh, we want to look for the initial breaks. What way are we breaking to start off the year to give us an indication? So the first thing's first. When we gap down here on uh, you know the beginning of the year and started to go, what that did was because it was right out the chute that triggered almost every signal that you could possibly have immediately to the downside. Uh, you're starting off a big gap to the down in the month. You're taking out a bunch of inside months, and we're starting off as a, started off as a reversal strategy week. And uh, I'm very happy to see more people in the VTF using the term rev strat uh, because this is a very powerful pattern, and I talk about it all the time, and it's something you want to know about. And so if we take a look at this spy weekly to close out the year, it was an inside week. All right, so it's a reversal strat has to come off an inside week so, or an inside bar. So this is an equilibrium. Couldn't make a higher high, couldn't make a lower low, and attempts to take it to the upside fails and closes as a shooting star, closes back into that range. That's a problem. That means there was an attempt at the end of the year to take this out and couldn't do it, and then it reverses back down, and I'll show you several of those uh, coming up. But also it happened in the QQQ. Rev strat week. And so when we started off as a reversal strat week to the downside to start off the year, uh, when I talk about a simultaneous break, not did we see that on almost every weekly chart, but that point that immediately, because it was hit so hard, triggered monthly charts to go to the downside here too. And I'll blow this up so you can see it. And so on monthlies right out the chute, you had inside month equilibriums breaking down in, uh, you know, Facebook, Cisco, you have Visa, Home Depot, which has been a leader in the Dow inside month and back down, Celgene in the IBB stuff, you've got Norfolk Southern in the trannies, and the trannies are a matter of fact, are inside year and down, and you can see how the power of this inside bar, that inside week, or that inside month, and you can see these inside week here, inside inside week here, which corresponded with the transports. Here, inside, inside, weak, down, sideways, measured move uh, to start things off. So we had that going on. Uh, you have Priceline and Priceline highlighted earlier in the, to start off the year as potentially being a very ugly chart, and certainly that came to fruition. And I don't want to be subjective. When I say ugly chart, how come, why? And so if we take a look at this, look at this. Straight up, straight down inside and so what that does is that sets up for a measured move to the downside because you've got everybody who was trying to be long in here right and everybody trying to be long against support and right here and an equilibrium and so all three of the months of people here long are long against this 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 here and when this takes out down sideways measured move with full time frame country to the downside and that was one of the things that really got hit and uh uh, we still have months to go. So <laughs> outside of that, um, when we look at today or we look at the move down we've had in the SPY, what makes it difficult is when you look at, it's easy to look at monthly charts that have big red bars and say, oh, I should have gotten short. However, if you look at the daily chart, not so easy. And it's like that opening gap went down, came back up and hammered and closed down the high. The next day it gapped up, went down, came back to the highs and then went there, gapped down, then was green after this business. So this is not easy stuff to stay short in. Uh, certainly if you're, day tra not if you're day trading, very difficult. Then you can have this rally up, down, and then fail through there, and then real nice move there. Some more of these 
attempted hammers down and spike back up. Uh, then this week was the the much better stuff here when we have this daily falling apart like this all day down, and then a big bright green that was day, and then today was actually green. We closed higher than we opened. So um, one of the things we want to look for is the problem is here we do ha we did have some stuff that would come back, but the 60s would change color. So time frame continuity for me means I want everything that I'm looking at, or most things, you know, depending on what we're doing, there's the level of volatility. But in general, time frame continuity is monthly direction, weekly direction, daily direction, and 60-minute direction. So if you're having, you know, trouble timing stuff uh, in this recent move, uh, knowing those opening levels are very important because um, we knew that from right out the shoot it was going to be very difficult for the SPY to uh, take retake the monthly opening. So that bias was going to stay red uh, outside of a huge rally. So then the weekly opening here for SPY this week here was 193.01. You know, 193.01. And so if you take a look at the 60-minute chart, Anytime the daily and the 60 is read below that level, here's your 1301 here, that at that point you have full time frame continuity to the downside. It's going down on all time frames, right? And so you had that here, and then beautiful move here, right here. Went through at 19301. The next 60 minute bar, nothing up top, just straight down. Uh, nice move for four hours, stuff like that. And so when you come into conflict, is when you have today, when you gap down and try and rally back, all right? You get down, try and rally back. Then you're up on the 60 in the day, um, and you're down on the month and the week. That's conflict, and that's when you can expect to get chopped up and stuff like that. So what we'd be looking for, uh, any time that that SPY opening here today was 186.77, any time we can be above that, if we stay above that, we're in conflict. And that means we can still look for long positions uh, with things that have full-time frame count near the upside. And so we're just monitoring the 60 here. Anytime this thing's green, uh, it can go. And you can see that was nice. At this point, it's green on the day in the 60. That's in control because the weekly time frame is exhausting uh, and the monthly is still in, in, in place. But uh, you know, on any given day or any given hour, uh, we can we can flip to the long side for whatever we need be, and a lot of the stuff uh, actually was on the long side. So in the morning, uh, a lot of it was easy to get chapped up. <laughs> in the morning, it was easy to get chapped up in here and be like, "What's it doing? It's going up. It's going back up. No, it's not. It's going down. No, it's going back up. No, it's no, it's going down. No, it's no, and that we don't know. And then what gave us the indication of the haymaker come, finally coming, giving it up was watching the relative performance of the SPY versus the Qs versus the IWM, and IWM was much worse right out the shoot anyway, but, and walk, looking for the equilibrium breaks of the inside bars, and so if you went to the Qs, at that time you had an inside 60, and that's what did it right there, inside 60, so at that point, equilibrium reached, haymaker thrown back down to the lows, and so we had some nice stuff out of there, so... Uh, and I know a lot of people like to try and pick the bottoms or whatever, and so, you know, I'll, I'll show you, you know, I prefer to be buying things that are going up than buying things that are going down, because when you try and bottom pick stuff, when it pops up, there's a lot of people who bought at worse prices than you that need to get out, and so it doesn't mean it doesn't work, and there's ways to do it, as you can see here, this is a reversal strat 60, right here, inside bar countered with hammer and then back up, if you go to Apple today, the low was nice for that type of trade, too. And pro I promise you, if you look for these things, you're going to see them all over the place here. And inside 15, down hammers back in the inside bar, counters it. And the reason this works is you reach an equilibrium, one attempt attempt to take the downside. And so at this point, stop it out all the longs. And if anybody is aggressively short in here, they need to, be, they need to cover before it gets back into the range. And if they don't, there's going to be stops here, here, here. Here, here, b -b 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 -g -b 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 bye. All right, so that's why that works. But uh, preferably on a day like today, we're looking for you know things that are trading near the high. So if you look at PRGS, PRGS, this not only goes reversal strat monthly to the upside, inside bar countered with hammer to the upside, but uh, at any point given the day, this is bright green on the week. Uh, granted, inside day, but green on the day. And then anytime that 60 is green, it's go time for something like that. Uh, you're also looking at uh, something like Wind Resorts, which was challenged on the longer term time frames, but after the opening, this thing wouldn't come in at all. And looking for that relative performance strength, where 
gets to correct. And if it's going to keep, it's either going to roll back down or it's going to go inside and go back up. And inside 15 to the upside, inside 15 to the upside, inside 15 to the upside. A little profit takey off of that. 15 down goes 30 up. And the importance to this one, 30 here late in the day, was it gives you the advantage of, of using the options going after the 58 calls for the quick pop, stuff like that. Uh, we're also watching and trading Hasbro. So if you look at Hasbro at any given time today, Hasbro's green on the month. Hasbro's green on the week. Hasbro's green on the day. Hasbro's green on the 60. Anytime that's green on the 60, it's go time. It's going up on all time frames. Why would it go down? And then if we can combine that with the psychology and the uh, technical mechanics of the, the futures, that anytime the SPY day and 60 are green, there's no reason that that should go down. So uh, looking at stuff like that, also picking up on stuff that's also want to look for anything that can take out yesterday's highs. So APOL, above yesterday's highs, right? Because we know there's going to be stops here and here. If you're short this thing, there's no reason it should be taking out yesterday's highs with the, the, uh, the way the market's acting. If you look at GGP, this thing, bullish engulfing on the day. Um, cyber, up on all time frames as well. Monthly, weekly, yay. Stuff like that. Uh, let's see what else we were looking at today. Oh, yeah, and the burritos. <laughs> the burritos. Yeah, if we take a look at the larger broadening formation, it completed right almost to the tick right here. Comes back, actually goes green on the month. Uh, when it took out 468, obviously, later in the day, but um, three quarters of the time frame, this thing's green and going on the weekly and on the daily. Here you can see that bright green never even t t challenges the lows. And so that was a real nice trade all day uh, today, too. Um, on the downside, you can look at stuff like CCI. And so what I look for is not only time frame continuity, but multiple actionable signals. So you're going to see an inside day to the downside, inside month and down. Is it red on the week? You bet it is. See ya. And so anytime you can look at that 60 fallen apart and I can look for another actionable signal like an inside 15 right here see ya at that point no chance <laughs> no chance um, so hopefully uh, whatever you're trading if you can just use this simple practice to look at the monthly weekly daily 60 30 15 5 you're gonna see a lot of this stuff for yourself and it makes sense and it makes things a lot easier so going forward what do we got coming in the market what do we got what do we got to look at here here's the good the bad and the ugly of it if you look at the weekly SPY, and you take this out here, yep, let's take it out further. Time to clean up some of my lines. Okay, even though the lines seem to work, uh, let's clean this up. Okay, let's go to the monthly anyway. Let's go to the monthly. What you're going to see is this stuff. You're going to see this, this low here, and... April in April of 14, you're going to see this low here. In October of 14 and last August here, you see this stuff? This is a big problem. And the reason is if we go through here, measured move on this kind of stuff, is if this is the range that expands down, you got all sorts of trouble. So obviously there's going to be a lot of eyeballs on this this neighborhood here, uh, right around the, uh, the 182 stir. Uh, and we got a ways to get there too. I mean, that's seemingly in this environment, we get there in a heartbeat. If you look at the cues, we're nowhere near this stuff. And so for the cues to even to come down and test any of these lows would be really rough. So that, that would be the problem is if we do get down there, test it and start to fail those levels, that 182, uh, then you got all sorts of issues going on. Um, at this point, you know, We'll see. Uh, we want to get this month over with as far as all these monthly signals that are going down uh, to see if that's going to happen. So what we look for in an exhaustion move to say that, okay, market's gone as far as it's going to go and it's going to retrace is a lack of actionable signals. And so we didn't have very many weeks last week because of the, the big hit. And we don't have that many inside weeks this week either. We do have a couple, though. We got Walmart. Walmart's an inside week and still above the, the and still green on the month. Uh, Union Pack, we're going to be watching that inside week uh, as far as the trannies are concerned to see if there's any hope there. 
Um, and the good thing is that we had a bunch of inside days today. So that's good and bad. What that means is these things were too strong to hit, take out yesterday's lows. That's good, unless all of these things break to the downside come next Tuesday. Uh, because that gives us more actionable signals still in force, reconfirming all these monthly charts to the downside. So you've got Facebook as an inside day. It's already inside month and down. If it breaks to the downside, that's got two actionable signals to the downside. However, if it breaks to the upside, your weekly and your daily and your 60 should be green, countering the monthly. And so long as that condition ex is in, in force, the monthly is negated. Reason being is, like, they're not here. They're not here today. They're not here this hour, and they're not here this week. Where are they? The only way I can identify that selling pressure to come back is if that 60 or any of those time frames turns red. But it would have to probably be on the 61st, right? Okay, so uh, we'll be watching that inside day in Facebook. You have an inside day in Netflix. you got an inside day in Twitter. Ugh, under 18, jailbait. If we go to Tesla... Tesla's an inside day and unfortunately trying to break an inside year, an inside quarter. Right now, SPY below 189.12 and is, is an inside quarter and down. So uh, we have all those kind of uh, equilibrium issues as well. Priceline, talked about that monthly, and now is an inside day too to see if that keeps going. If we take a look at the oil patch, uh, when I talk about the rev strat, there's a couple ways it can happen. It could be hammer shooter against hammer or shooting star against that inside bar, or just go up and close back in the range, or completely travel to the other side of an inside bar in one bar's range. We saw that in crude oil on the weekly here last week. Inside bar it poked to the upside, once reversal strat back down to the downside here, and that's when you flip back to DWTI and say, oh yeah, baby, reversal strat in oil. Real nice, real nice there. We even had the SPY rally off of that type of reversal strat on the 30 today. Here, inside bar poke to the downside, completely took it out here. Reversal strat there for the nicest up move of the day. Uh, if we're taking a look, uh, so with oil, obviously, going out on the lows. Uh, you know, it's, it is what it is. But like I said, if it, it's got a, gap, a little gap to fill and it starts moving up a little bit, uh, we want to see how sensitive this market's going to be to any rally in oil. And we did have some inside days. ExxonMobil goes inside day. ExxonMobil is an inside day and green on the day at that. You have Halliburton. You have CLR. You have NOV. You have Valero. So all over the different sectors of the oil patch. And Valero there, inside, inside day. You got Oxy and more big capper uh, to keep an eye on. And and the Dow Jones, you got McDonald's stayed as an inside day. And then that Celgene is an inside day with the month and down. And the IBB still an inside day. So we'll keep an eye on that. BIIB is an inside day. And, uh, well, this is pretty long for the uh, market wrap, but you got a whole weekend to look at it. And uh, hopefully that helps to try and understand uh, where you want to be, what's happening, and why, and when. So one monitor that those monthly openings, those weekly openings, daily openings, 60 openings. Take a look at your charts. Is something going up or something going down? That should be clear as a, day, clear as a bell. All right, that's going to do it for today and this week. Everybody, we got a nice long weekend. I hope you all enjoy it uh, with your families or whatever you like to do. And be safe, and I will see you Tuesday morning. All right, I'm Rob Smithy in the Black VTF here at T3 Live with today's Market Wrap-Up.